Just not home to me. But for now, I'll tarry here. Though the shadows dim my eyes, still through this present darkness, I can feel my spirit rise. Yes, there are blue skies are coming. Though the clouds are dark and gray, though the thunder and the lightning say a storm is on the way. Trust Him and obey. There are blue skies coming any day. We're all too often troubled, but never in distress. We are never in despair, although bewildered, I confess. But in spite of persecution that the enemy deploys, we are not forsaken. Trust Him and obey. There are blue skies coming any day. There are blue skies coming any day. Well, there are blue skies coming, though the clouds are dark and gray, though the thunder and the lightning say a storm is on. Trust Him and obey. There are blue skies coming in day. There are blue skies coming in Good evening and welcome to South Hatesboro Church of God. So good to see you in God's house tonight. Good to have Brother and Sister Ball back. We've been missing them. All right. Praise God. Got a few announcements. We've got the Spiritual Renewal Week from May the 15th till May the 22nd, seven days of prayer and fasting. So be you know preparing for this. Uh, we want to pray and fast and seek God that you know our church will be uh, uplifted. You know God can touch us and help us if we'll pray and fast. He said some things only come by prayer and fasting. 
Also, uh, the services for Sunday will be indoor. We was talking about having the worship service outdoor, but because of the weather, we're going to have it indoors. Uh, also, continue to remember the evangelistic quarters uh, pledge cards and get one fill it out. Also, Sister Albright's class is going to stay in the sanctuary tonight. Uh, she's not here tonight, so we're going to be praying for her. Uh, Brother Charlie, also, the evangelist quarters, they're working right now. They started this week putting the shower in. Praise God, we're moving right along. They're putting in the shower started this week, so praise God. Yeah. As we pray, let's earnestly seek God for Sister Sandra. She uh, really needs a touch from the Lord. Let's pray for her, for her healing. Continue to pray for Sister Blanche's healing. Continue to pray for Brother and Sister Ball. God will continue to touch them and bless them. Uh, pray for Mr. Evans, uh, Evans Music. God will continue to touch him in his body. He's doing better, but, you know, we want to see him completely healed. Uh, pray for Sister Albright. She has some dental work done today. Pray for her that God will just be with her tonight. Continue to pray for Brother Benny and wife Sandra and the passing of her mom. I was talking to him, and uh, I said, just reading the write-up in the obituary, she sounded like she was a wonderful woman. He said she was. Said she, he was her favorite. I said, yeah, I know how that is, you know, being that favorite. I can believe that Brother Benny would be the favorite. He said he was anyway. But we're going to stick with that. Ain't right, Brother Benny? Everybody thought they were. Yeah, everybody thought they were. But Brother Benny said he's going to stick with it. Right, Brother? Uh, okay, if we will, we'll stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Has anybody else got a prayer request? Yes. Yes. Pray for Sister Angela. Pray for Sister Angela. <coughs> yes, pray for Sister uh, Amy's job situation. We're going to anoint Sister Angela. Praise God. Praise God. He healed, God healed Brother, ben, uh, Brother Dean Sundays. He's the same God tonight. He can heal Sister Angela. God's been healing people. We thank Praise God for God. it. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Some of you, brethren, if you will, lay your hands on Brother Bald. He needs a touch in his back. Come on, gather and pray for him, please. Sister Shelton's going to stand in for my mother tonight. Also, pray for Brother Zach. He's not feeling well. Let's pray for God to touch him. Hallelujah. Amen. If you need to be prayed for, we'll anoint you with oil tonight. This is biblical. This is scriptural, what we're doing here.
Believing God's touch tonight, we're going to hear testimonies of what God has done. Praise God. You know, there's a lot, been a lot going on about this Roe versus Wade being, being overturned. And I praise God that I hope that it is overturned. But for the Christians, there's no debate about abortion. Abortion is wrong. Isaiah 5 and 20 said, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Let us pray that the children will have a chance at life. You know, I heard one person say the only people who support abortion are people that weren't. Makes a lot of sense, don't it? The only people who support abortion are people who weren't aborted. But let's continue to worship. Uh, and we'll get our ushers to come and receive our evening offering. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brother Albright, would you pray over this time of worship? God richly bless you for your faithfulness and giving. Uh, appreciate Brother Jalen helping us out on the piano tonight. <laughs> this time we'll have Sister Amy, Sister Andri Anna, and Sister Andrea come and minister in song. Y'all pray for them. I just want to thank the Lord for his faithfulness and his goodness to us. He's good, isn't he? All the time, I praise him for his mercy and his grace. If y'all worship with us, we try to sing. See a fancy miracle for all to see, just the words go down seven times. So, as Naaman made his way into the Jordan River that day, I can't help but think what was on his mind as he slowly the water's edge it rushes in over his head he looks to see if the curse has washed away oh does he say I can't 
keep going down and getting back up but i see no change i feel no touch from you lord where could you be this water's dirty and it's cold but there's healing in it so i'm told a miracle but i've yet to see but i'm staying here until you're through until i get a hold of you i'm gonna keep believing that until then i'm gonna go down again inside I've heard your voice a thousand times but now that seems so long ago oh and I'm still trying to believe that somehow you're listening but I would like a sign so I could know oh sure hope left yet if you wouldn't just forget I'm fighting on my knees to get to you so this is what I'm gonna do I'll keep going down and getting back up till I see a change or feel a touch from you know you're hearing me this place is lonely and it's cold but it's holy ground so i'm told the secret place where you will meet with me so i'm staying here until you're through until i get a hold of you i'm gonna keep believing that until then i'm gonna go down again i'm gonna go down again i know what i feel deep inside i've heard your voice a thousand times but now it seems so long ago oh and i'm still trying to believe that somehow you're listening but i would like a sign so i could know oh surely there's hope left yet if you wouldn't just forget i'm fighting on my knees to get to you so this is what I'm gonna do I'll keep going down and getting back up till I see a change or feel a touch from you I know you're hearing me this place is lonely and it's cold but it's holy ground so i'm told the secret place where you will meet with me so i'm staying here until you're through until i get a hold of you i'm gonna keep believing but until then i'm gonna go down again I'm gonna go down again. Hallelujah. Praise God. That song you know, it's telling about persistence. Sometimes we have to be persistent in our prayer. We've got to go down again. If we don't get the first answer the first time, go down again. We've got to keep on until we get the answer. Praise God. This time I'll turn the service to Pastor Brother Shelton.
God, give the Lord a hand of praise now. Hallelujah to God. I believe Jesus is coming again. I don't believe that we should look and plan for him to come tomorrow because he could come tonight. I don't believe we should be making plans for next week or next month or next year or five years down the road that Jesus could come then. Jesus could come this very hour. Can you say praise the Lord? I know that we all have family members that's lost. Every one of us, I would dare say, have somebody in our family that's lost. Maybe we have multiple family members lost and undone without God. I don't want any of my family or your family to die and go to hell or to be left here to go through that tribulation. I pray for your family every single day. I hope you're praying for hours, praying that God will save them before it's too late. But I want to tell you, friend, when that trumpet sounds, I'm not going to ask God to take it back. I'm not going to ask the Lord to wait another day. When that trumpet sounds, if you're not ready, you're just going to be left here. But I want to go when Jesus comes. How many feels that way tonight? I want to go when it comes. I want to shed all of this mortality. Put on this immortality. I want this corruptible to put on incorruption. And to be with Jesus Christ forever. Can you shout amen tonight? Glad to have brother and sister Ball back with us. Give God a hand of praise. He's helping them one day at a time. I used to sing an old song, one day at a time. Sweet Jesus, that's all I ask of you. We need him today, amen? Yesterday's gone, tomorrow's not here. I need him today. I need him now. If he wakes me up tomorrow, I'm going to need him. That will be today. I'm going to need him again. Can you say praise the Lord? Continue to pray for my mother. She just needs God to help her. She needs a touch. And uh, she wants to be in church. She told me yesterday, I want to be here. I said, Mom, you don't have to tell me that. I know when you're not here. When you say you can't come, I know you can't come. And she wants to be in church. Anybody that loves God, when you can't go to church, you want to be in church. There's a desire to be there. Amen. And uh, we want to pray for her. Continue to pray for Sister Blanche. And uh, you're, you're a Christian. That's in you. You want to go to church. And uh, I'm glad before I got saved. I'm not glad before I got saved, but I'm glad that after God saved me, that I want to be at the house of God. And you do too. You're a Christian. You want to come to his house. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 3 tonight, we want to get in the Word of God, and we'll begin reading in verse 16 tonight, I'm so glad what God's doing, God's healing people. There are some folks who don't believe in the healing power of God, well you ought to, God's healed you somewhere along the way whether you realize it or not. God has touched your body, helped you, moved in your life. My grandfather used to say that there's things that that God's healed us of at times we didn't even know we had going on inside of our bodies. But God would touch us and help us. Appreciate the Lord touching Brother Dean on Sunday morning. I shared with you last week in revival. Uh, we prayed on Wednesday night for healing for some folks. And um, Brother Marshall was in the hospital. He, had, he was septic. He had infection in his bloodstream. He's 94 years young. And... Uh, the pastor called me that day and told me that we will need to really pray for him. It's not good. Uh, the doctors were doing everything they could do, but there's nothing else they could do. On Wednesday night, we prayed for him in that service. We had a knockdown drag out, and I like those knockdown drag outs. And uh, some people got knocked down, and we drug the de devil out of there. Can you say amen? Nevertheless, that next night, I asked the pastor, I said, how's Brother Marshall? He said his daughter called me today. He said the blood, the infection has gone out of his bloodstream. The doctors can't find anything in there, and he's coming home the next day. So we thank God. <clears throat> God can do it again and again. Amen. If we'll just keep going down, keep believing, keep praying, keep trusting God. Habakkuk chapter 3. Now, if you're not a student of the Bible, you didn't even know that was in there. There is a book in the Bible called Habakkuk. I told a man one time, I was just testing him. I test people once in a while. He talked a big talk about the Lord and all this good stuff. And I said, I was reading in the book of David one day. And he told me as, as a conversation went on, that was one of his favorite books in the Bible. Well, if you there is a David in the Bible, but there's not a book of David in the Bible. If you go through this book and you, you look in the Old Testament and the New, you'll not find it. And uh, I thought, well, maybe he just was mistaken 
So sometime later, I tested him on something else, and he failed again. And uh, he was 0 for 2. And uh, so we, are, we need to be students of the Word of God. We need to be in this Bible and know what this Bible says. How are you going to know what to do if you don't know what the book says, the instruction manual, if you don't know it? How many men, how many men have ever tried to put something together and say, I don't need the instructions? Oh, great God, help us. <laughs> And how many has ever had to go back and look at the instructions? Brother Ball, you better raise your hand. Maybe he didn't, but it wasn't right. <laughs> we need this instruction manual if we're going to go to heaven. There is so much confusion today among the church age. What's right, what's wrong, what you're supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do. If you really want to know and be sincere about it, get in the word of God. Get in prayer time and talk to God. God will reveal himself through his word to you and show you what's right and show you what's wrong. Amen? <clears throat> Let's pray. Father, thank you. <clears throat> thank you again for the joy of being in the house of God tonight, Lord. We're grateful to be saved, glad to be sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost. Glad that our name's written in the Lamb's book of life. For this, we can rejoice as the children of God. I thank you for the singing tonight. Thank you for Brother Jalen, God, and the way you're, you've changed his life. You're working in him. Thank you for using him, God. And thank you for all the good things in our lives that we know come from you. Every good and every perfect gift comes down from above, from God Almighty. Thank you for touching Brother and Sister Ball. Continue to heal their bodies, God. We pray, Lord, for those that are sick, those not here tonight, those watching online. Maybe there's some in this house that's sick this evening. God, touch them and send your word and heal them tonight, Jesus. Lord, I need your help tonight. Now, God, I confess to this congregation, I can't do anything on my own. I need your help. need your touch, Lord. I pray, God, hide us behind the cross. Let it be effective tonight. Let it touch somebody's heart. You, you burn this message in my heart, not just my mind. Let it get beyond the mind, get down in the hearts of people tonight. Help those in this house, those that are watching on the internet. And we'll praise you and love you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. amen. I appreciate the way you're worshiping, Sister Tina. Amen. Keep worshiping like that. Praise God. Habakkuk chapter 3, begin reading in verse 16. Habakkuk said, when I heard my belly, that is my body, tremble. My lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. Then he said in verse 17, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail. And the field shall yield no meat, that is, no food. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. There shall be no herd in the stalls. This is a grim picture of the future, what's coming for Judah. When Habakkuk realizes this, what's going to happen? He said in verse 18, yet or in spite of all of this, in spite of this, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Then he tells us how he could say something like this with the calamity that's coming. He said, the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strength. He'll make my feet like hinds feet. Hinds of a deer, a small deer. And he will. Make me to walk upon mine high places. This says to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Brother Scott, give me a little monitor, please. <clears throat> I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. <clears throat> the Lord, Adonai, is my strength. <clears throat> and he will make my feet like hinds feet. And he will make me to walk upon mine high places. Can you lift your hands and give God praise for his red word tonight? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Brother Clendenin said when he was young, he said when he preached, he said, I, I could run around the building. He said, I got older. He said, I couldn't run around the building anymore, but I could still shake my leg. He said, man, I hope I can shake both my legs tonight. Say praise the Lord. I want to preach to you on this thought, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. In spite of this, I will rejoice in the Lord. When we look at the book of Habakkuk, we can find that the prophet was in the midst here. If you back up and read these previous chapters, the prophet was in the midst of asking God for judgment on Judah because of their sins. Now, I believe today that we ought to pray for God's mercy. I believe we ought to plead the blood. I believe we ought to pray for God's grace. But I also believe that at times things can become so wicked that we ought to pray enough is enough. I said things can become so vile, so ungodly, so unholy that we can pray God stop this wickedness. God put the brakes on this wickedness. God stop the wickedness in the White House. I believe we can pray that prayer today. God stop the wickedness in the abortion clinics. I don't believe we have to pray for mercy and grace over the abortion clinics. I believe we can pray God shut them down. God close their doors. God run the doctors out of there who are committing such vile sins against the unborn. Can you say amen? I believe I heard it correctly. 63 million unborn babies are killed every year in the United States of America. 63 million. I believe that we can pray God stop the wickedness in the schoolhouses. I believe we can pray God shut down the drug dens. We can pray God shut down the tattoo parlors. Shut down the piercing pagodas. Shut down the ballrooms. I believe that the church can have the same hatred of wickedness uh, the way that God hates it. When Habakkuk saw the wickedness in that day, uh, he asked God for judgment on Judah because of their sins. And God answered Habakkuk uh, and told him that judgment was on the way uh, through the Chaldeans. God was going to use this wicked nation, that is the Babylonians, uh, to rise up and overthrow Judah and take them captive. God's judgment's going to come here. And Habakkuk realizes when he knows what's going to happen, he realizes that the times ahead are going to become very difficult. He said in Habakkuk 3 and 17 that we've read to you, uh, we find some of the results of this impending judgment uh, and the difficulties it's going to bring in the land of that day. He said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. There shall be no herd in the stalls. Here we find that he makes mention of the fig tree and the grapevine and the olive, the grain and the flocks. When he makes mention of these, this covers the entire range of the agriculture produce which that nation had depended on. They had depended upon the fig tree, the fruit from it. They had depended upon the grapevine. They depended upon the olive tree. They depended upon the grain. They depended upon the flocks. But God said during this time of judgment uh, that the fig tree would not blossom any longer. There will be no fruit on the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail. The field shall yield no meat, that is, no crops. Their flocks would be cut off from the fold, uh, and the stalls would be empty of livestock. All of this can be traced back uh, due to their sins against God uh, and now his impending judgment uh, upon his people. Unrepented sin uh, will always bring God's judgment. He will bring God's judgment upon an entire nation, 
It'll bring God's judgment upon a city or a town. It'll bring God's judgment upon a church. It'll bring God's judgment upon a home. It will bring God's judgment upon the individual. Unrepentant sin will always bring the judgment of God Almighty. The Bible tells us that when the Chaldeans invaded the land, they would not only live off the land, but they would deliberately destroy the trees. They would deliberately destroy the crops. Everything's going to be destroyed by the invasion of this enemy. So Habakkuk, the prophet here, uh, he, he's, a, he's a child of God. He's a servant of God. Uh, he's a righteous man. But Habakkuk realizes uh, that the days ahead uh, are going to be more difficult uh, than the days that were behind them. I believe there's a spiritual application when we look at this nation today. I don't like to get up and preach doom and gloom uh, all the time, uh, but nobody in their right mind can read the Bible uh, and realize that we're not facing some doom and gloom uh, in this last hour. Can you say amen? I believe just like in Habakkuk's day, uh, due to the sin of that day, uh, things became worse and worse. I told you many times, and I'll say it again here tonight, I love the United States of America. Somebody say amen. I love this country. I'm glad I was born in this country. I'm glad I was not born in the Middle East. I'm glad I was not born in the deep, dark jungles of Africa. I'm glad I was not born in a communist country. I'm glad I was born in a nation that was created to be one nation under God. Can you say amen? I'm glad that I was birthed in this country. But I also believe that this nation that's been so blessed by God for the most part has turned her back on God. She has sinned against the Almighty. We're living in a nation today uh, that is absolutely in open rebellion uh, against a holy God. We're living in a nation uh, that is unholy, uh, that is unrighteous, uh, that is ungodly, uh, and they're not doing it behind closed doors. Uh, they're doing it out in the open uh, in rebellion against God Almighty. I believe that we as a country, uh, you can believe it how you want to. Uh, you can say things are looking up. Uh, things are going to get better. Uh, we're in an election year. Uh, if we can get the Republicans back in the majority, things are going to get better. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, in the last election before this one, uh, the Republicans, they were in the majority. Uh, and this nation still bound by sin. Uh, this nation still bound by wickedness. Uh, I'm just telling you how. Uh, the Democrats cannot save this nation. The Republicans cannot save this nation. The Independents cannot save this nation. It is only through Jesus Christ and the repentance of our sins. But blessed be the name of the Lord. If we we'll repent of our sins, he is just and righteous to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness. Amen. God will hear the cries of repentance. God will turn a nation that is turned away from him. If they will repent and turn back to him, God will turn what's bad into something good in this country. Can you say praise the Lord? That this, this election year, and I, you know, it troubles me, and I want to be careful here. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time here on this. Uh, I'm just telling you, uh, we're spending a lot of time trying to promote this election. Uh, we're spending a lot of time promoting me, and, and I understand behind what's behind that. I understand all that, trying to get good men uh, in positions. Uh, I want to tell you, friend, uh, more than any other name, uh, we need to be promoting Jesus Christ. Uh, I said we need to be promoting promoting the Lord of glory. Only Jesus is going to save us. Only Jesus is going to help us. I'm glad for godly men and we ought to vote for godly men. I said we ought to vote for godly men. We ought never go to that, that ballot box and vote for somebody ungodly just so we can pad our pockets with money and get our way. We ought to vote by the Bible and by the Bible alone. But men are not going to be 
our answer men's not going to help us it's going to take a power greater than our intelligence our abilities it'll take the power of the blood of Jesus Christ to save us today somebody give him a hand of praise <coughs> hallelujah to God this country is facing dark and difficult days ahead I'm afraid I think I told you recently we're in so much debt in this nation Lord God have mercy we are in so much debt that we cannot get out I said we can't get out of this debt that we're in this economy is going to rupture. This economy is going to burst. And we may end up like one of these communist nations today. Amen. With our hands out begging for help from the government. And that's where our help comes from. I want to say this to you, child of God. No matter what happens in this nation. I like what the Bible said. The apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 verse 19. But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. When this economy ruptures, when this bubble bursts, I'm telling you friend I'm not looking to the stock market to protect me I'm not looking to the banker I'm still looking to the Lord of glory the last time I read heaven's not bankrupt it'll not go bankrupt and God's going to meet the need of every child of God they tell me sister Shelton said they don't make such but by way of comparison, that a crisp, brand new $1,000 bill stacked four inches high is, is the equivalent of a million dollars. To make the point of how deep we are in debt in this country, they said that take a $1,000 bill, a crisp, brand new $1,000 bill, stack it four inches high is a million dollars. They said for, for a trillion dollars, you'd have to stack it 27 miles high. We're 30 some trillion dollars in debt in this country. And every day, my friend, we're getting deeper and deeper and deeper in this debt. It's not a matter of if it's going to bust. It's a matter of when it will bust. I'm just telling you, if we've ever depended on God, I think the child of God's going to know in these dark days ahead, if the Lord tarries is coming, what it is to depend on God. God uh, to supply our every need. Uh, I want to say this to you, child of God. Uh, you don't have to look down the road with fear. Uh, you don't have to look down the road with trouble uh, in your heart. Uh, if you live right, uh, if you give God what belongs to Him, uh, I'm telling you, friend, He can still cause fish uh, to spit money out of you. Uh, he'll supply your need. Uh, he'll make a way where there is no way. Uh, that is the Word of God. Uh, you can stand on it and you can say amen to it day after day after day hallelujah to God the days ahead are going to be some dark days for the United States of America they are going to be some difficult days ahead for this nation the apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy 3 and 1 this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Psalms 9 and 17 said, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Psalms 50 and 22 said, Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. When I read the word of God, and I compare what the Word of God says to the condition of the United States of America. This nation is in real trouble. 
If you're placing your trust uh, in the primaries uh, at the end of the year, uh, if you're placing all your hope uh, in 2024 uh, for a new president, uh, listen to me, friend. Uh, we ought to do more than just talk bad about the president. Uh, we need to be praying for his soul. Uh, the Bible said we're to pray for our leaders. Can you say amen? I said we're to pray uh, for our leaders. I know he's incompetent. Uh, I know the direction this country is going, uh, but it could could be that God Almighty uh, put him in that position uh, to pronounce judgment uh, upon this country, uh, to lead this country down the path uh, that she has chosen uh, away from God. Uh, we need to be praying uh, that somehow our eyes will be opened again. Uh, somehow our leadership will see uh, that we've gone a long way from God uh, and our only hope uh, is still in repentance, uh, a heart turning back to God. Raise your hands and praise the Lord tonight. That burdens my heart. I love this country, Sister Tracy. I love the United States of America. I don't agree with the direction this country is going. We've come a long way the wrong way in this nation. This is not what this nation was founded upon. This is not what our forefathers died for. This is not what they shed their blood for. God's not going to let it continue to get by. We are heading for a major disaster in this country. We are heading for great calamity in this country uh, because of our neglect of God Almighty. The further we get away from this book, uh, the worst things you're going to see take place in this country. Uh, the more you're going to see this, this homosexual agenda, uh, this lesbian and transgender uh, agenda today. Uh, listen to me, friend. It seems like in this country, uh, amen, everything that's ungodly uh, has all the rights. Uh, that Christians do not have rights in this country. Uh, we don't seem to have a voice. Uh, but let me tell you something, friend. Uh, I don't blame that on this country. I, I blame that on the church. I, I said I blame that on the church. We've sat quietly by. We've sat on our comfortable pews. We've sat in our air-conditioned buildings. We, we, you know, we've clapped our hands. We've said amen. We've let the Lord bless us. We've had the feel goods, And we sat idly by while this nation continues to pass laws that are contrary to the word of God. I still believe if the church uh, would stand up again. Uh, I believe if the church would arise, uh, there's still enough of us in this country uh, to say we're not going to go this direction. Uh, we're not going to tolerate this. Uh, we're not going to put up with it in the schoolhouse. Uh, we're not going to take it anymore. Uh, I believe we would see some change uh, in this nation, but as long uh, as the church uh, hides behind the four walls, uh, we're going to continue to go downward uh, and downward uh, until we are no more a nation. We need the church to get full of the power of God and go out and take a stand in this nation today. Hallelujah to God. We're heading for disaster. We're heading for a great calamity because of our neglect. Now we're forgetfulness of God Almighty. Right now, this country almost as a whole, shakes her fist in the face of God. When she puts on her parades and her marches down through the main streets of towns and cities and the most ungodly perversion, oh God, if it makes me feel the way I do about it, how must it make a holy, righteous God when he looks down upon mankind that he created to worship him and to serve him, to worship their own bodies, to worship their flesh, to worship their lust, to worship idolatry. I want to tell you something. It makes God sick. I said I believe it makes God sick and his cup of wrath it's filling uh, day by day uh, and there's going to come a time uh, when it's going to overflow uh, and it's going to be poured out upon us. Uh, I don't believe there's another day to wait uh, for the church to get on fire. Uh, I don't believe 
believe we can wait till Sunday service uh, and get it right. Uh, I believe we got to do it now, times on an altar. And the nation uh, needs to see a church alive uh, and on fire, uh, pointing men to Jesus Christ. Somebody give him praise in this house tonight. My God, my God. I'm glad we can enjoy times that we have in these four walls. I'm glad there's still some good godly churches out there. People that love God with all their heart. I'm glad there's still some folks on fire for the Lord today. But the church has got to do more then just sit back on the pew and say it feels good to have padded pews and air conditioning in the summer and heat in the winter time. The church has got to get focused uh, on God again. Uh, and when we get our focus on God, uh, we're going to see what He sees. Uh, we're going to see sin the way He sees it. Uh, we're going to regard iniquity the way He regards it. Uh, I'm just telling you, friend, uh, the clock is ticking. Uh, I said the clock is ticking. Uh, time is running out. Uh, time's going to run out on this nation. Uh, I, I would cry out to every pastor, Lord God, have mercy mercy. God forgive us of our pride of not wanting to be wrong. Help us God to humble down to get back to preaching the simple gospel, the word of God that will point men to Jesus Christ. Let the pew in the pulpit get on fire get full of the power of God and go out and make a difference in this world today. Let the young people get on fire for God. Take that fire in the schoolhouse. Uh, point men to Jesus Christ uh, before it's too late for this lost and dying world. Raise your hands. Tell him, Lord, set me on fire. Set me on fire. Oh, God. Give me a burden, Lord. Give me a burden, Lord. We talk about being on fire. We relate that with the wrong. It's wrong how we how we picture it and what we what we're trying to to say. We say we need to get on fire. We we, we relate that to shouting. I'm on fire because I shout. The devil can shout. We need to get on fire of trying to be a light in this world again. We need to get, the devil can't win souls. The devil can talk in the tongue. The devil can shout. The devil can appear to be fiery. I've seen men that, that were that way, but were ungodly people. The devil can mimic all of that. Uh, when we talk about getting on fire, we need to get our facts right. Uh, it's not just so we can shout, praise God, we're on fire, we're shouting. Uh, shouting doesn't win anybody. Uh, it takes the gospel seed. Uh, it takes the gospel message. Uh, we need to get on fire. Uh, that We've got a burden uh, that will cause me. Uh, that that words in my heart like a fire shut up in my bones and I can't help but tell somebody I can't help but sing the song I can't help but tell the story that Jesus saves I said Jesus saves this nation's going to hell in a breakneck speed the church has got to come alive the church has got to get a burden the church has got to get her faith on fire again and go out and make a difference in this nation before time comes to an end So when I say God set us on fire, I'm not talking about get our shouters stirred up. Because we can shout till Jesus comes and never fulfill the great commission that God has called the church to fulfill. Somebody ought to give him a hand of praise tonight. The last several years of my ministry, don't know a time I've always had a burden for the lost always have I'm glad there's been times I've had to pray through and fast God make it strong in me again because things going on busy 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 with ministry 
sometimes not proper business. You can be busy and still not be doing what God wants you to do. But I've had a burden the last, I told it at the revival last week, the last, the last few years, two or three, four, just the last few years, I've had a greater burden for lost souls than I've ever had before because I know that time is running out. We've been in this service already tonight almost an hour, and an hour of time has passed in this nation. How many people, how many countless people have dropped off into hell while we're here in this atmosphere tonight? How many people are dying right now? while we're here in this atmosphere here tonight. I, I'm just telling you, I, I, I want a revival, but you know, I, the revival I want's not one to make me jump up and down. I, the revival I want's not one to make me run around the building. Thank God we can have those times. I, but the revival that the church needs now I, is a revival I, that will cause us to weep between the porch I, and the altar. I, a revival that will call us I, to stand in the gap I, and make up the hedge, a revival that will set me on fire inside of me and realize if I don't do something, if I don't get busy, people are going to die lost without Jesus. My God, people are going to die lost without Jesus Christ. Our families are going to die lost. Backsliders are going to be forever lost. The church needs to be on fire with a burden for lost souls. If we've ever prayed. We need to pray now. If we've ever seen a move of God, not to make me jump and get happy, but to cause me to go out to the highways and hedges and compel men to come. We need such a revival in a time like this. We need such a revival in a time like this. This nation is standing before God, shaking her fist in his face. We don't believe you. We don't believe you exist. And if you do, we don't care. We're going to do our own thing. We're going to live how we want to live. We're going to do it the way we want to do it. They're shaking their fist in the face of God. They openly promote sin. They openly promote, promote wickedness and homosexuality and lesbianism and abortion without ever blushing or any sense of guilt and shame. I want to tell you something about this transgender movement. I'm not going to have time to finish all this tonight. Let me tell you something about this transgender movement, men thinking they're girls and girls thinking they're boys. They're so confused today, they don't know what they are anymore. A man, a man can have a feeling. I don't know about you, I ain't never felt like a woman. Never. I ain't never thought, well, am I a girl? I've known what I was since I was born, old enough to know what I was. But there is a spirit that's getting on our young people, that's getting on our family members, that's causing them to say, I know, I know what I was born as, but that's not what I really am. This, this movement today, Satan's behind it. Don't you come tell me that God made them that way. God does not make a mistake. God didn't say, uh-oh, I gave them male genitalia. I should have gave them female genitalia. I made a mistake. on God does not make a mistake. This is demonic. It is spirits. It is from hell. Come on here now. God never made a mistake in that Garden of Eden. He made a man a man and a woman a woman. This, this this transgender movement, listen to me, friend. Uh, a, a man can decide uh, that he no longer wants to identify as a man. Uh, he's going to identify as a girl. Uh, he can change his appearance. Uh, matter of fact, they can even go to a doctor, uh, and they'll change their genitalia uh, to make them appear to be uh, what they're not. Come on, say amen to me. 
This is what's taking place. They don't want to identify anymore as male or female, man or woman, boy or girl. They say today we want to identify as us or they or them or we. Don't you call me a male. Don't you call me a female. Don't you call me a man. Don't you call me a woman. And listen to me, friend. But the nation applauds it. God bless them for their bravery to come out. God bless them for their, their bravery uh, to, to, to stand up and say this is not what I really am uh, this is what I'm supposed to be I want to tell you something, friend. Uh, when that man who identifies as a woman, uh, when he dies a uh, hundred years down the road, uh, if somebody digs up his bones, if scientists uh, dig up his bones, uh, hey man, and do DNA on him, uh, they're not going to discover what he identified as. Uh, they're not going to discover what he said he was. Uh, they're not going to discover what he wanted to be. Uh, hey man, that DNA does not lie. Uh, if they were born a male that DNA a hundred years down the road it's going to be male DNA it's not going to say they identified as a woman they identified as this or that God does not lie God does not make mistakes I want to tell you something friend we ought to be burdened over our young people that are getting caught up in this deep chasm of demonic activity this confusion that's causing them to not know what they are we need to pray that God uh, will open their eyes uh, and let them know that God knew, my God, uh, that God knew them before he ever formed them uh, in their mother's womb, uh, that they'll repent, uh, that God will have mercy, uh, and God will save their souls and remove the blinder from their eyes. bashing them. Stop bashing them. And try to be a blessing to them. Try to be a light to them. You don't have to support what they're doing in sin. No more than you have that you have to support that drug addict or that alcoholic. But you can be a blessing to them by letting them see Jesus Christ in your life. I remember a number of years ago. Jaden, you want to come on and play soft there for me? Please. I'm off my topic here, but I'm all right. The Spirit of God's just doing something here. You see, we want a burden for the lost that's in a neat little package. We want them to be a certain way so we can have a burden for them. But we ought to have a burden for the worst of the worst of the worst in sin. Such as were some of you. Before somebody, somebody showed me compassion. Somebody was on fire and had a burden for my soul. Somebody showed me what it was to live right. Somebody showed me what it was to live a holy life. Somebody showed me that Jesus can save you. So stop bashing them. Let's spend less time talking bad about the president. Did you feel that kick a little bit? I did. I felt that kick a little bit. I don't agree with his politics. I don't agree with his competency. But he's got an eternal soul. You better be praying for these leaders. I don't agree with everything in the church of God. There's some things in the church of God I absolutely disagree with 100%. I don't mind saying it. But we better be praying for these leaders. I don't agree with these compromised churches. But we need to spend more time praying for these compromised churches. I remember a number of years ago. You feel that draw up? You feel that draw up? A number of years ago, we had a homosexual come into our service. Just before some of you were here. And 
as lost as lost can be. And he came down to the altar in that service. People were standing around. And I was preaching. And he, come and help me. There was a man in that service, that homosexual. I knew what he was. He got up out of his pew and he walked down to that altar. And he laid his hand on that man. I saw that man jerk from him. And I believe you can see the thing. I believe he would have killed him. see anger come up in him so he realized who it was boy that's how to win them isn't it show hatred to him I can't stand you won't you dare get near me but Jesus went to the lepers the law said don't you touch them And what did Jesus do? He could have just spoken the word, but the Bible said he touched him. He was moved with compassion because of their spiritual infirmities. They were bound in sin on their way to hell. There is spiritual leprosy today. Later on down the road, that man didn't come back to church for a long time, but sometime later, that man came to a service. He sat there and cried throughout the whole service during the preaching, the singing. When the altar call was given, he looked like he had AIDS at that time. I don't know if he's even living today or not. the altar call was given he went down to the altar and I saw him shaking he was crying so hard we got down that altar with him I put my arm around that man and I cried with him others others got around him put their hands on him praying for him God please deliver him God please save him we want the fire Sometimes what we're thinking is not what God's thinking. We want to shout. We want to goosebump. We want to feel good. I want to say this as you stand, please. What good is it to shout and to feel good and to have goosebumps and go out day to day and never try to win anybody to Christ? When I stand before God at the judgment seat, He's not going to ask me how many laps I ran around the building, how many times I jumped up and down, how loud I shouted, and how long I shouted. But I will give an account for every soul that I tried to win. I will give an account for the work. Habakkuk realized things are going to get worse and grim in his day and they did they got bad they got bad for Judah the Babylonians overthrew them they went into captivity 70 years destroyed the temple destroyed the walls of the city 70 years in captivity but Habakkuk said in spite of all of this yet I'm still going to rejoice in the Lord. The Lord's going to be my strength. We're going to need His strength in these times. We're going to, listen, if you've ever been close to the Lord, you better get close to the Lord now. If you've ever been strong in the Lord, if, if, you, if, you, if you're still stuck in that bottle, you need to get off that bottle and get in the meat of the Word. If you've ever laid down everything there is to lay down for God, 
even the very appearance of evil, you better do it now. This world needs to see real Christians. Not, not, the, not the money hungry men on TV begging for money saying send your money in and God will get your boy out of prison. God's got a special place for those men that rob people like that. But the church needs to get full of the power of God to live righteous and holy and go out and compel the lost to come in to have a burden for the lost to have a burden over this nation I love this nation if you love this nation you ought to be praying for this nation I said if you love this nation I love the church of God we ought to be praying for this denomination for a revival to come that she would turn back and get right with God we go back and we, we talked about it recently about how the revivals used to be and the way people used to move and the way people were being saved and lives being touched. I, I want to tell you, friend, the devil ain't going to try to win the devil. The world ain't going to try to win itself. I, it's going to take full people full of God and on fire for the Lord that will go out and make a difference in a time like this. I, people that's been touched by God, that's had the hand of God laid upon their lives and appoint men to Jesus. When's the last time you prayed for this nation? Earnestly. I'm talking about earnestly prayed. When's the last time you prayed for the lost? Earnestly prayed for the lost. When's the last time you tried to reach somebody that was lost in sin? No wonder the Bible said God's going to wipe away all the tears from our eyes. I believe He's going to do a lot of tear wiping at the judgment seat because of our failure to fulfill the great commission that God's given this church. Everybody come stand, please. If you're lost, you can be saved. If you're sick, you can be healed. If you're hurting, you can find hope. I want my bird.